Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a short look at the Wagner line, the fortification the Wagner mercenaries are currently building. What is its purpose? What it's actually what is it actually good for? And what are the parts that make up the line? Now the line is currently being built inside of Donbas behind the front line. Going up here, this is Kremina, this, these are Siviero Donetsk and Lysyshansk. So the line is going to follow the Sivieski Donetsk here down towards the Russian border. The line will protect the former so called People's Republics, the area that they controlled more or less since 2014, plus obviously something extra. And they are currently being built by the Wagner mercenaries. Let's look at some videos to see how the progress, how the um, how the fortifications are actually being done. Now, this here is a MDK-3 um, pioneering um, uh, machine. These are Dragon's Tees, and this machine here is actually digging a tank trench. And those are two lines of Dragon Tees that are obstacles to meant to stop tanks that are being set up here. Um, we see one line here, but I think the line more or less with it we see that the tank like we see that it's a system with the tank ditch here and the dragon's teeth in front we have more videos though here we see some video from the infantry positions and we can watch them here we see they are currently digging trenches for themselves and we can see that they have prefabricated um, concrete bunkers to reinforce the position. Obviously, we can't really say how strong they are and how much uh, how much artillery they can take, but it's reinforced with pre, pre the prefabricated bunker positions, the the um, positions there. Let's advance a little here so we can see more. Those, as you can see, there are two lines of the dragon teeth, and each line is um, made up with two different um, two single lines in itself that are being set up. The interesting part now is what we see is the MDK-3 in a moment. This, it, this machine is meant, as already said, to dig tank trenches, tank trenches, as we can see here. Now, this is 3.5 meters in width, and this is important because the uh, T-64 BV, that is the main battle tank of the Ukrainians, can cross trenches, ditches of 2.7 meters. Uh, if it's longer than that, the tank will basically tilt forward because of its own uh, center of gravity. It will tilt forward and then nose dive into that tank ditch. And as the tank can only lift itself up over 80 centimeters, this means that it will be stuck in there as each of those, every time it runs through that line, it digs down to 1.75 um, meters as far as I can see. Let's check real quick. The numbers here um yeah 1.7 meters so in this 1.75 meters so in this regard this tank ditch here is meant to more or less like like a um, moat from a castle you could see so it's meant to stop them it's meant for the tanks if they cr if they try to cross they fall in and they get stuck and they are uh, a target in there that can't um, do anything anymore and we can see them here running it and you can see how it, it um, digs the, the ditch. Um, here we have a video of them placing the dragon teeth, which is interesting because we can clearly see both not only the hooks here, um, the, the um, metal pieces where, where it's not a hook, I, I can't remember the right word, but basically where you hook, hook them up to place them. But what is interesting is that we see a soldier here and it's more or less up to its hip. So the height of, of the dragon teeth is probably no more than a meter. Um, this is important in several regards, as I've read that once one cubic meter of um, reinforced concrete weighs about 3.4 tons. If this is a meter or less, and it, then it's obviously not one cubic meter. It might be more or less two tons. Now, the dragon teeth of that weight um, might be light enough for a main battle tank to push them aside 
to roll, roll them over and not be much of a, um, um, a problem. And as we can see here, they are placed on the, on the ground just inside of the field. And that's a difference to the historic examples we have here. This is the Siegfried line, the Western Wall in Germany that was built before the Second World War. And you can see not only are the dragon teeth far closer, they are also embedded in concrete so they can't be flipped over. The dragon teeth themselves are meant to stop the tanks and if a vehicle tries to roll to go over them they are meant to um to either flip it over or to make it run up so it's it's um, wheels or it tracks its tracks lose contact to the ground and thus immobilizing it here's an example from switzerland the so-called toblerone barriers as they look like the chocolate we also see it's far bigger and far closer no way of uh, a track uh, no way of a vehicle crossing through here, unlike here where there might be a chance of actually a slimmer, a slimmer armored um, truck or, or um, APC crossing through. Um, this is obviously something that can still be changed, but it's an example of how the the situ how the the tr the defensive line is currently being built. Obviously, they can place more of those dragon teeth, but you already see some fundamental problems, which in itself is not. Um, doesn't mean it's useless. Um, this, by the way, is an example we've already seen in this war. This is a so-called Czech um, uh, hedgehog. It's invented, it was invented by the Czechoslovakian Republic in the 30s for its defensive line against Germany. It's three pieces of metal welded together and this has the big advantage that, that it's lighter, that it's easier to transport and even if a tank more or less flips it over, it's still keeps being a barrier and at the same time those those edges might um, even damage the the tank and stop it this way here we have an example an area view of those um, defensive lines so first we can see that they have two lines of the dragon teeth one line of the um, tank ditch behind it and here we can see the infantry line clearly seen clearly to be identified with the zigzag which is meant to to um, reduce the effect of artillery hits um, in this regard. Now, how, what, what is that good for? What is such a line good for? You have to see that defensive positions, defensive um, structures have two main objects. They have other objects too, like projecting power, like um, intimidating and other things like this. But the main objects of defensive structures are to slow down the opponent and to, to give cover to yourself. Those are the two um, reasons to build defensive structures in usual way and you might have already realized that i said to slow down not to stop and this is the important part now those those dragon teeth they might be small enough that ukrainian tanks can push them aside even though i would highly doubt that apcs like their btr4 or btr 80s that they can push them aside or that the bmp2s or bmp1s could push them aside main battle tanks might be able to do that but not the smaller IFVs and APCs. Um, you can also push them aside with um, pioneering equipment, with, um, um, with tractors and anything like this, or you could place demolition charges, blow them up and thus create a path. Any tank ditch, um, all you need is either a, t a tank with a shovel in the front or a pioneering vehicle again to just basically build a ramp into the ditch and then a ramp out and any tank can drive right through or you even fill it up with earth so you can run right over it everything of this is easy to surpass so why do you even build it in this regard it's kind of similar to a minefield a minefield sounds to a civilian as extremely dangerous and impassable but it actually isn't the very first moment a minefield is identified is usually by running into it so you lose one or two um uh, vehicles but after that you can disembark you can look for another way or you can disembark and start clearing those mines the minefield only becomes really important and really powerful when it's defended and this is the important part here what we can see here with the infantry line behind it now i explained you several examples several ways to get rid of those fortifications but for each of them you have to slow down your forces you have to disembark you have to gain, uh, bring in special 
um, pioneering equipment, engineering equipment that is not armored to the same degree as a main battle tank and thus much more vulnerable. Everything of this means that the Ukrainians are being slowed down massively when they try to cross this and all of this in full range of small arms fire from the Russian lines and of course from anti-tank missiles that are, have a much easier time hitting anything the, the Ukrainians bring in if those um, I, IFVs, APCs or MBTs the Ukrainians bring have to stop at those lines. Another option is also that the, the Russians leave open gaps inside of these lines. Um, it's human tendency to follow these open gaps even though they are obviously traps and that's the main goal of it, you leave an opening for your own use, obviously, but also for the enemy use and thus you already know where he's going to come from and you can concentrate your fire and do much more damage. So what is this defensive position good for? Well, it's going to slow the Ukrainians down. That, that much is for sure. It's They can overcome it. But what they would have to do is basically to suppress the infantry line here fully, probably with accurate artillery fire, while being fairly close to that and um, bringing in equipment to get rid of those defensive lines. And of course, um, this line is not on the front line yet, so the Russians have more time to add further layers of defenses to those lines here to increase its defensive um, purpose further. The most likely result of this is to slow the Ukrainians down massively, to, to increase their casualties, and obviously if the Ukrainians if the Ukrainians have a choice, they will not break through a defensive line like this. They will rather go around and look for a path where there is no defensive line like this. So in, 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 in summary, it's far from useless, but it's also far from absolutely unbreakable, um, the, the massive defense that can stop everything. It's going to help the Russians defend the, this line. It's going to help them significantly, but it's probably not going to be enough if the Ukrainians really push for it and really want to go through it, but they will suffer um, heavier casualties in the process. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope this was enlightening to you. If it was though, please consider supporting the channel. This channel is only possible because of the viewers like you, um, of the support of viewers like you. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. And obviously you can also support the channel by hitting the like button by commenting what do you think is this a good idea a good investment of the russian resources in this regard trying to set up defensive lines like this a discussion about that should and could be quite interesting and will also help with the algorithm and if you haven't subscribed yet i would like to invite you to subscribe hit the bell button so you don't miss future videos and obviously recommend the channel for your friend to your friends and acquaintances so we um we here and this channel here can grow further this was it for me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.